This is Arkies in the Beltway, a look at national politics and the Arkansans influencing the discussions. I'm Alex Thomas, Washington correspondent for the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, reporting from the nation's capital. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Arkies in the Beltway for the week of October 8th, 2023. The U.S. House of Representatives in uncharted territory. The office of Speaker of the House of the United States House of Representatives is hereby declared vacant. The House last Tuesday voting to oust Kevin McCarthy of California as Speaker. Florida Republican Matt Gates filed the motion to vacate, the move after McCarthy had to rely on Democrats to pass a short-term funding measure to avoid a government shutdown at the end of September. Seven other Republicans joining Gates, House Democrats opting not to save McCarthy's speakership. Many Republicans left the House floor after the vote furious toward Gates and what transpired. One of those, Representative Rick Crawford of Jonesboro. I think people need to understand the difference between a Republican and a reactionary. Um, Somebody that's a populist that doesn't have a true north. That's what we're dealing with here. Gates' action, the first instance of a successful motion to dump the Speaker of the House, all four members of Arkansas's House delegation, wanting to keep McCarthy as Speaker. Representative French Schill of Little Rock, is a McCarthy ally. I've been a lifelong Republican and a lifelong conservative. And in my view, ejecting Kevin McCarthy was a mistake. McCarthy began his tenure as Speaker nine months ago, surviving 15 rounds of voting and disputes within the House Republican Conference. Hill and Representative Bruce Westerman of Hot Springs spoke on the floor during the voting saga in January, vouching for McCarthy's ability to lead the chamber. Westerman defended McCarthy on the floor last week, asking McCarthy's opponents to explain why removing McCarthy would be beneficial to the country and advancing the GOP's priorities. If you cannot do that, which you have failed to do so far, then voting yes is at the least a disruptive overreaction. In reality, it's selfish, bad for conservative policies, and bad for America. Westerman stood by his remarks when speaking to the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. You know, I played a lot of team sports growing up, and the old cliche that there's no I in team is something that I think think people are going to have to come to grips with. Um, and as long as we've got individuals who want to be there, you know, be on an island with themselves and a few other people and not be part of the team, it's going to be hard to become unified. Representative Steve Womack of Rogers presided over the vote. Womack says he wanted to prevent as many disruptions as possible, aware of the contrast between Republicans and Democrats and temperaments within his own party. He even met with the House parliamentarian 30 minutes before the first votes Tuesday afternoon. I wanted to make sure that I protected the integrity of the institution. That I didn't want people watching, wondering, you know, who that idiot is up there in the chair, bumbling around, not knowing what he's doing. The magnitude of ousting McCarthy did not hit Womack until much later. Last night, I didn't sleep well. Uh, I was up late. Part of that was because my phone continued to blow up. But then some of the emotion began to hit me. Womack says McCarthy's downfall stemmed from wanting to please the entire conference, resulting in losing trust along the way. Part of his personality was he, he didn't want people to go away from a meeting unhappy or sad or anything. You know, Boehner didn't care. Uh, Paul Ryan was pretty transactional with you. But Kevin's personality was a little bit different. And he wanted people to like him, as anybody would. And uh, therefore, I think, kind of overpromised himself out there. And some of those promises probably came home. Without a speaker, the House is at an absolute standstill. The full chamber cannot take up legislation or address the need to take up funding measures until legislators pick someone to lead. Westerman notes the House was supposed to consider appropriations bills last week to prevent a government shutdown again in mid-November. But that all changed with the ousting of McCarthy. We haven't done any appropriation bills because now we can't even put a bill on the floor. So it's going to be very difficult to make that happen. If there's not a Speaker of the House by November 17th, then the question becomes, how do you pass anything? Crawford expressed similar concerns immediately after last Tuesday's vote. It is inherently chaotic in the the process of legislating. I'm not sure what you would call this. Even chaos is is understated what, what action he just took. Representative Patrick McHenry of North Carolina is leading the House in an acting speaker role. Hill serves under McHenry on the House Financial Services Committee. He knows he has to conduct 
uh, a fair and open election of a new speaker. That's his first task so that the House can get back to work. Uh, he's working diligently at it. He's meeting with uh, members from all over the House conference to hear their views. Uh, and so I'm trying to support him best I can. We've been friends for over a decade as I'm his vice chairman of the House Financial Services Committee. McCarthy is not seeking to reclaim his post. Two people in the speakership race, Representative Jim Jordan of Ohio and House Majority Leader Steve Scalise of Louisiana. Crawford Hill and Westerman shying away from making any endorsements with the House Republican Conference set to convene Monday night. Hill says he wants to have an open conversation about the best person for the job and the vision among House Republicans. I think the House uh, membership needs to come together and see if they want to make any rule changes connected with electing a new speaker. Because in my view, any deal that was cut between members of the House and Kevin McCarthy is null and void because Kevin McCarthy is no longer the speaker. As for Womack, he is supporting Scalise, citing Scalise's leadership abilities. The two spoke last Tuesday evening after the vote ousting McCarthy. Womack's only concern, Scalise's health. The Louisianan announced in August he was starting treatment for blood cancer. And I wanted to make sure, as his friend, that it has the blessing. I know he wants to do it, but does it have the blessing of his oncologist? And does it have the blessing of his wife and kids? Because that's going to be important to me, because there are things trust me, more important than the work we're doing here. According to Womack, Scalise assured him he could handle the speakership. The House will reconvene Wednesday and could select a new speaker at that time. That will do it for this edition of Arkies in the Beltway for the week of October 8th, 2023. A programming note, we are taking next week off, but you can stay up to date with all news involving Arkansas at ArkansasOnline.com. You can follow more from me on your social media platform of choice. My handle is at Alex House Thomas. I'm Alex Thomas, and this has been Arkies in the Beltway. Thanks for listening.